Hi there, my name is Leif Gregerson and I am giving, sending you this video blog uh, right around Christmas time. It's actually the 23rd at 11 p.m. Um, so I'm sending you this video blog uh, which I call Mental Health Coping Skills Strategies. Um, the reason I'm sending a blog tonight is because uh, the Christmas holidays can be a very difficult time for some people. Right off, when I think about the Christmas holidays, I think about my mom, who was a key part of each and every Christmas when I was growing up. Uh, she worked very hard. She saved her money all year for Christmas. Uh, it was the most important thing to her. And then when Christmas came, uh, she prepared an incredible feast for everyone, our extended family. And uh, um, it was... Uh, it was a very difficult time for her and it was stressful. And it's stressful for me now to think back on, on my mom and how much I loved her and how much she gave our family uh, because she's passed away now for quite a while. So that's difficult for me. Um, but there's another way that Christmas can be difficult for someone. What can happen is you can be alone over Christmas or you can be among people, say roommates or somebody, uh, that you don't feel close to over Christmas and I think that's a real mistake for someone to make um, now sometimes some people might have uh, bad feelings about the holidays I know I certainly have some bad feelings going on uh, sometimes um, when I was 18 there was a very difficult time between me and my father who by the way now I, I find to be just a total incredible wonderful person um, but when I was young, we clashed in a lot of things, and uh, I was actually kicked out of the house on Christmas, and it, it took me quite a while to, to forgive my dad. But the thing is, what I started to realize was that it wasn't so much me forgiving my dad, it was me getting out of sort of a, a, a victimhood or a blaming situation that I was in. I would, you know. I, I blame my dad that uh, I had psychiatric problems and, and that was certainly not the case. Uh, mental health problems, you know, my problems are genetic but uh, no parent wants to pass that on to their child. And no parent um, really should ever stop and say, no, I should not have children, you know, um, because uh, no because of like they shouldn't say I, I, I shouldn't have children because of a mental illness um, because life can be still very wonderful if a person has a mental illness and uh, I'm very glad to have been born and, and to be alive and I think my family feels the same way yes there were some difficult times uh, but we got through them uh, so as far as um, being alone for Christmas um, when I was younger that was a situation I brought on myself I imposed it upon myself and I would end up feeling pretty darn depressed uh, over the holidays. Um, the way I started to get out of it was I, I decided that um, my family was important to me and that uh, I should spend some time with them. Um, Christmas a few years back for our family was, was a much different occasion than it is now. Now we have a small gathering, just my dad, my brother, a couple friends uh, of uh, my dad and I and stuff like that. And my brother cooks and, uh, and that's Christmas. Uh, but to me, another thing took over for Christmas and that was uh, starting to attend church. Um, church is great. Um, some, people, uh, some people with mental illnesses maybe shouldn't some people with mental illnesses maybe shouldn't uh, get themselves too involved in church but um, the fact is um, it can really give you a grounding it can give you good morals it can give you uh, a place to meet and and to uh, fellowship with people um, I know I've made a few friends and solidified a few friendships by going to church and um, but I don't I don't want really to have to say one church is better than the other. Um, I just know that a person with a mental illness is very susceptible to certain things like uh, being, being sort of wooed in, 
uh, with the promise of uh, friendships and the promise of these things, uh, sort of being wooed in and then finding that uh, it doesn't satisfy your needs for those and then maybe you go to another church or you, you sort of jump around. Um, what I really recommend is is that a person just, you know, investigate religion basically and uh, and uh, read up a little on some of the, the thinkers and things like that and uh, absolutely read the Bible and um, make friends with, with a few people of different religions. Um, for a while I, I started making friends with uh, the priest here in the neighborhood before I started going to the services uh, of the Catholic Church. Um, I've actually also made friends with the, uh, with the Protestant Church right across the street from it. Um, and I've been to both services, but um, basically I, I don't want to get too far in, too extreme with doing any of it. Um, I don't want to give all my money to the church. I don't want to sacrifice uh, my happiness um, for something like uh, going on a mission or, or something like that. Um, I just would like to have a place uh, to go uh, that builds me up. And I found that the Catholic Church for me personally uh, does the trick. Um, I, don't, I don't have much anything against uh, a lot of other religions. I do know that some religions um, appear to be spiritual, appear to be Christian, and are not. And that's a matter of choice. Um, so, but uh, to get back uh, to the whole idea of surviving the holidays, um, it can be such a tough time. And um, some of the ways you can deal with it, um, I was thinking about some different ways. Uh, one of the ways you can deal with it, um, take some time ahead and put your name in and volunteer for something. Uh, volunteer at a soup kitchen or something like that. Um, if you haven't uh, had the time to ahead, you know, which of course if you're taking this advice you wouldn't be able to uh, unless it's, uh, unless you're watching this a year from now in 2020. Um, but basically um, if you go out and volunteer, if you do something positive it can be really good. Um, I would say if you have a Christmas and you're not doing anything, um, make sure you've got some, some clean clothes. Uh, make sure you've taken a bath or a shower or something like that. Uh, I don't discuss this a lot, but it's something that can be extremely essential to people who have mental illnesses, is uh, to keep themselves neat and tidy and to keep their homes neat and tidy. And this can be very difficult. I, I strongly suggest uh, on Netflix, there's a Marie Kondo series, uh, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. And if you watch that, it'll teach you a lot about keeping your house clean and organizing your stuff. And uh, it can be extremely beneficial. It can make you feel a lot better, especially around times like the holidays. But you know, on Christmas uh, is what I'm talking about. And basically, Make sure you have clean clothes. Um, you may have to push yourself a little, but you know, even the night before, whatever, uh, get a good bath or shower. Um, not so much so you look good for others, but just so you feel good for yourself. And get out, and maybe there's a Christmas celebration. Maybe there's a, a choir singing at a, a local church that invites uh, visitors. Maybe there's uh, even, a, even a dinner that you could go to. Um, you can go to these different things and uh, hopefully make friends and, and keep yourself busy. Um, depression is the worst around the holidays and sadly enough suicide is is probably even up there a lot uh, as far as the times of the year go. Uh, Christmas suicide is, is terrible and I'm going to try and post some uh, phone numbers. Um, I'm going to assume that most of my, most of my listeners are uh, in Canada or the US and I'm going to try and post some numbers uh, on this link on this uh, video blog uh, scrolling up and down whatever on uh, numbers you can call don't be afraid to call them it can mean a lot if you reach out and um, it can be if it's just a tough time for you you know 
uh, push yourself through it. Let, do the things that make you feel good and if you can forgive those in the past that may have done you wrongs and uh, do something with them that's even better because family and friends are so important at this time. I also have a couple other small suggestions. Um, if, if you've ever had any addictions problems or anything like that, um, a lot of groups like AA or Narcotics Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, a lot of these groups will hold 24 hours of straight meetings right over Christmas uh, because, to give you support. And maybe you could go as, uh, as someone who's been going for a while, maybe you can just go as someone who would like to discover a little and uh, my experience is you will find these places very positive and very welcoming and let's not be alone for Christmas you know let's uh, let's be good to ourselves and uh, be thankful to the universe to God um, to our Creator be thankful for who we are and, and what we've become because we're all beautiful people thank you very much and happy holidays